Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're starting a new video series on the Laplace transform. What is the Laplace transform? Well, it's a mathematical tool that transfers a function in the time domain to a function in the complex frequency domain. Hmm, what does that really mean? Well, the main purpose of this whole thing is to solve differential equations more easily. And what it does, it takes a function such as this, where we have an amplitude, could be the voltage, could be the current, could be position, and it's a function of time. And here you can see there's an oscillating part of that function coming from this part of the function here, and then there's an exponential decay function coming from this part of the function there. They both play a role in that function, so we see that the amplitude depends on the independent variable t. When we do a Laplace transform, we transform this function into a new function where it now becomes dependent on the variable s. S is a complex number. It has a real part and an imaginary part. A lot of times there isn't a real physical meaning to this part of the function. When we transform it into a complex frequency domain, then it doesn't necessarily have a real physical meaning. Sometimes there's some things, some aspects of it that we can say, hey, look, there's some relationship there, but typically there is not really a physical meaning to it, and so therefore it becomes a little bit more difficult to understand. It's simply a tool. For example, we take this function right here. Let's say that y is a function of time, and here we have a differential equation. It's a very simple homogeneous differential equation with some initial conditions. Then we do a Laplace transform. This function will not look like this. Here it's a function of the variable t. Here it's a function of the variable s. I'm not showing you yet how we get from here to here. We'll see that on some later videos. The actual process of taking the Laplace transform, taking a function here that's a function of time to a function of a complex frequency domain. Now what we do here is once we convert it like this, we're going to take this and solve that for y. Now notice here we have the small letter y, there we have the big letter y. That's the typical notation. Once we take the Laplace transform of a small function f, it becomes a large capital letter f. We then solve that while it's in the frequency domain. We solve that equation for the variable y. Now it's capital Y, which is a function of independent variable x, which is this complex number right here. And notice, this letter here, sigma, is related to the number up here. So it's related to the exponential decay constant. And omega here is related to the actual frequency oscillation of this function here. In other words, this sigma means this number 3 here, and this omega really means this number 20 there. So we solve this equation for y in terms of independent variable s, and then we use partial fractions to write it as a sum of fractions like this. At that point, we can take what we call the inverse Laplace transform and then convert it from the frequency domain back into the time domain. And once we do that, we have the solution of our initial differential equation. So that's why using the Laplace transform it makes it a lot easier to solve differential equations because what we're doing here is we're converting it into a format where we simply have to manipulate this algebraically and then take the inverse Laplace transform then to convert that back to the ultimate solution. In other words, this is the frequency domain solution, this is the time domain solution. To see some analogy here, notice that we can simply see that this is a decaying oscillating function. As time goes by, the oscillation gets smaller and smaller. The amplitude gets smaller, I should say. And so this can then be represented in what we call the complex frequency domain. Notice the real part is on the horizontal axis, the real value right here. And remember that the real value is associated with how fast the amplitude is decaying. The faster it decays, the farther these points right here would be drawn to the right. If we have an exponential growth function, if this was a positive value right here, then our axis would be on the other side. And of course, if the axis would be on this side, that would then indicate that we have a growth function. If it's on the right side, we have a decay function. And then where they're placed relative to the real axis right here in the imaginary part, that's associated with the actual frequency of oscillation of the function. Notice that the larger the frequency, the higher the axis would be drawn, the smaller the frequency, 
the closer they would be to the real axis. And of course, if there's no frequency at all, then the axis would be on the real axis as well. There's no oscillation of frequency with respect to time of the original function. So that gives you kind of a feel of what a Laplace transform is. We don't know yet how to convert it from the time domain to the frequency domain. We'll learn how to do that. And then we don't know yet how to convert it from the frequency domain back to the time domain. So we'll show you how to do that later as well. Plus, there's all kinds of rules and regulations in which we have to abide by. We'll show you how to do those, and we'll show you some of the main key aspects of how this can be related to some real physical functions and physical relationships, such as circuits in the double E. We can go ahead and apply the Laplace transform for that as well. So all that is still coming in the following videos, but here at least you have some idea of why we even want to bother with Laplace transform. It turns out it's actually a real useful tool.